All right, so tonight we're going to start Unit 6, Lesson A. Now, in this unit, we are actually going to work on solving quadratics. Oops, a little stream right there. Um, we are going to work on solving quadratics. Tonight's objective is to solve a quadratic equation by factoring. Now, remember for our quadratic equations, we always are in that setup of ax squared plus bx plus c. Now, in our last unit with unit 4, we worked on factoring these types of problems. The difference here now is each of these are going to be set equal to 0. So we are going to try and find a solution for our x values. One thing you guys should recall here is that we have this zero product property. So what this means is if we take any two numbers, any two real numbers, and we multiply them together, and the answer is zero, then at least one of those is going to be zero. So what this is saying is if I took negative four times zero, we'll get zero. If I took zero times three, I'm going to get zero. At least one of those solutions, because we're multiplying, is going to be equal to zero. So each of those we can set equal to zero. So if we take a look at our first example here, we need to solve by factoring. Now, in our unit four, the biggest difference was right here. We didn't have this equal to zero. We were just factoring to find our binomial pairs. The difference here now is we're actually going to find, like I said, what x is equal to. So if you guys recall, the different types of factoring we have are GCF, difference of squares, easy trinomials, our AC factoring, we have our perfect square trinomials, and then finally our factor by grouping. Now, the biggest thing we have to remember is in that last unit, or that last section in unit 4, we made sure that we factored completely. That's the same, we need to follow those same rules in this section. So if we take a look at our first example here, we have 12x squared minus 27x equals 0. So the only way that we can factor this, because we have two terms, is either with a GCF or a difference of squares. This is in the section where we have a difference of squares, so we're going to factor out a GCF. So we can take a 3x out of each term. So remember that GCF needs to go on the outside. And now what I have left over is 4x minus 9. Now we're still going to set this equal to 0. So now what we have to do to find our solutions for x is we take each term and set it equal to 0. So I'm going to take 3x equal 0. And I solve for x, so I divide both sides by 3. So one solution is x equals 0. And then the second one, I'm going to take 4x minus 9 equals 0. So I add 9 to both sides. And I get 4x equals 9. Now I want to get that x by itself, so I'm going to divide both sides by 4. And my other solution is x equals 9 fourths. Now we can go ahead and just leave this as a fraction. But what this means is if I take either of these two solutions and plug it back into the original where I see x, our solution will be equal to 0. So if I take 0 and I plug it back in, 0 minus 0 is 0. Because if I have 12 times 0 squared minus 27 times 0. So 12 times 0 is 0. 0 minus 0 is 0. So this solution does in fact check. Same thing if I were to take that 9 fourths and plug that back in. And this works for any of the examples that we're working with. Now if I look at example B, the difference here is we still only have two terms, so I can use GCF or difference of squares. We should recognize now that this is going to be a difference of squares. So remember, I set my two binomial pairs up. One's going to be addition, one's going to be subtraction. The square root of y squared is y. And then the square root of 16 is at 4 and our negative 4. And those are going to be equal to 0. So once again, I'm going to take each binomial and set it equal to 0. So y plus 4 equals 0. And then y minus 4 equals 0. So I subtract 4 from both sides. 
So I get y equals negative 4. Here I'm going to add 4 to both sides. Remember, we want to do the inverse operation, and I get y equals 4. So these are my two solutions for y. The degree tells us how many solutions we're going to have, so since this is squared, we should have two solutions for y. So we're going to skip these u tries for now, and we're going to move on to our next example here. <coughs> we're going to have the same exact direction, except our problems look a little bit different. Remember, in order for us to solve, we always have to have it set equal to zero. So the first thing that I'm going to do with this first example is I'm going to subtract 18 from both sides so that I can set this equal to zero. So now I have x squared plus 3x minus 18 equals zero. So now I should recognize that this is one of those easy trinomials. So I need something that multiplies to a negative 18 and adds to a positive 3. So the terms I'm going to use here are 6 and a negative 3. When I multiply those together, I get that negative 18 back. And then when I add them, I get a positive 3. So now I set up my two binomials. I have x plus 6 times x minus 3 equal to 0. Now I'm going to take each term again and set it equal to 0. So I have x plus 6 equals 0 and x minus 3 equals 0. I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides. So I have x equals negative 6 for one solution. I'm going to add 3 to both sides in my other equation. So I get x equals 3. Same thing like we said before. You can go ahead and plug this back into your original. And it should be a true statement. Both of these should check, which means that we have the correct answers here. Now, if we take a look at letter B. Remember, the first thing we always want to look for is if there's a GCF. These terms do not have anything in common. So this is going to be an example of our AC factoring. So remember for this, I need what multiplies to a negative 6, so A times C, and adds to a negative 5. So the terms I'm going to use here are a negative 6 and a positive 1. And when I multiply those together, I get a negative 6. And then when I add them, I get that negative 5. So this does, in fact, work. So remember, for our AC factoring, that first term stays the same. So this is going to be 3x squared. I split the middle two with these terms here. So minus 6x plus 1x. And then that last term stays, so minus 2. And then we still have it set equal to 0. Now I'm going to go through and find the GCF both sides. So I'm going to factor out a 3x. So I'm left with x minus 2. On the other side, I'm just going to factor out a 1 so that I can have that leftover term. So this is going to be x minus 2, still equal to 0. So now remember these match. So we have our happy face here. So my 1 binomial is going to be 3x plus 1 because those are our leftovers on the outside. And then my second one is going to be the parentheses that match, so the x minus 2 equals 0. So now all we did at this point was factor. So now we need to find what x is equal to. So I'm going to go back again and I'm going to set each term equal to 0. So 3x plus 1 equals 0 and x minus 2 equals 0. So here if I add 2 to both sides, I get x equals 2. So this is one solution. And the other one, if I subtract 1 from both sides, I have, I'm going to move my work up to here, 3x equals a negative 1. Divide both sides by 3. So my other solution is x equals a negative 1 third. So the only new steps here are really, like I said before, working with actually finding those solutions for x. Once again, we're going to take a look at these u-tries tomorrow. So let's move on to our next page here. We once again have the same exact direction we want to solve. So that means each of our problems need to be set equal to 0. So the first thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to always look for that GCF. So for my first one, I can actually take a 4x out of each term. 
So if I take out that 4x, we have to remember that that goes on the outside. Then I'm left with x squared minus 11x plus 24. And this is still set equal to 0. Remember in Unit 4, we always said that we had to make sure that we, can, we have this factored completely. On the inside here, I have an easy trinomial. So I can go ahead and factor this. Remember, I need something that multiplies to 24 and adds to a negative 11. So I'm going to work with negative 8 and negative 3. When I multiply those, I get a positive 24. And then when I add them, I get that negative 11. So in my first parentheses, I'm going to take x minus 8. And the second one's going to be x minus 3. And then we're still going to set it equal to 0. Now this is where I'm going to take each term and set it equal to 0 again. So I have 4x equals 0, x minus 8 equals 0, and x minus 3 equals 0. For this first one, we want to get x by itself, so I divide both sides by 4, so I get x equals 0. Here I add 8 to both sides to get the x by itself, and I have x equals 8. And then finally, with the last one, I'm going to add 3 to both sides. So I can get x by itself, and I get x equals 3. So these are my three solutions. And remember, we said that we can kind of use the degree as an indicator to how many solutions that we have. So our highest degree is 3, so therefore we should have those three solutions. Moving on to part B, remember we said that each one has to be set equal to 0. So my first step here is I'm going to add 24x to both sides. So now when I rewrite this, I have 3x cubed plus 18x squared minus 24x is equal to 0. So remember when we're factoring, we always want to look for that GCF first. So I can go ahead and actually take a 3x out of each term. So remember that GCF needs to go on the outside. And I'm left with x squared plus 6x oops, sorry, plus 8 is equal to 0. Now, my GCF will stay on the outside. But once again, I have another easy trinomial that I need to factor. So I need something that multiplies to 8 and adds to 6. So I'm going to use 4 and 2. So when I multiply those, I get that positive 8. And when I add them, I get that 6. So my first binomial is going to be x plus 4. And the second one is going to be x plus 2. So now I want to take each term again and set it equal to 0 so I can find my solutions for x. So I have 3x equals 0. Divide both sides by 3. And I have x equals 0. Next one I have x plus 4 equals 0. So I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. So I have x equals negative 4 as a solution. And then finally, this last one, I'm going to take x plus 2 equals 0. Subtract 2 from both sides, and I have x equals negative 2. So once again, each of these, if we plug them back in for x, our answer should check for our solution. So the left side should be equal to that right side of the equation when you're checking these solutions. So again, we're going to save these other u tries for tomorrow. Um, the last thing that you guys need to make sure that you are doing is you need to fill out this bottom half. After watching this video, what can you now do? If you still don't know, what should you be doing? Do you rewatch a video? Ask a friend. Ask questions. Make sure you sign up for some T-Bolt time. That's all I have for you guys. We'll see you tomorrow.